guard offense, and then Kiefer and Buckley up front. So a little bit of a different look. Cartello not starting tonight for Purdue. Gene Cady is the dean of Big Ten coaches. His 24th season, he's won 503 games, lost 242 overall in his coaching career. And there's a look at his mark at 67.7%. As for the series history, well, Northwestern, believe it or not, has won two of the last three, and they won the last meeting up in Evanston. Purdue leads the series overall. It's won seven of the last ten, including nine straight here at Mackey Arena. Good to have you with us tonight. There is your Tim Young. Northwestern in the traveling purple uniforms with the white trim, white numbers in Purdue and the home whites with the old gold and black trim. Keeper on the tip with a shot controlled by Purdue. McKnight sets the floor. We've got Lowe on the wing. Lowe, in addition to being an outstanding uh, scorer, or outstanding defender, is a very good scorer for this team. So they missed a lot when he was out the last four games or so. Suffered an elbow injury with about 15 minutes ago at Indiana four games ago. Kenneth Lowe out of the corner. Well, that's a big lift for Purdue just to get him back and in the flow. It would be interesting to see, Wayne, how his conditioning holds up. He's been able to do some light running during the course of his injury, but that's a lot different than basketball-type conditioning has been held out of contact drills up to this point. Well, Sean, I'm sure they'll have to spot play him a little bit here tonight, but he did get the start. Northwestern, very patient. McCusick on the block. Tolich from the outside. Foot three, and that's a good sign for Northwestern in that if Tolich and Dewanchich, when he comes in, if they start hitting that shot out of the top of the key, it opens up a myriad of possibilities down low for Northwestern. And I'm not going to say that's a rare shot for Tolich, but that's the first main three of his career. <laughs> well, historic moment. Got to start somewhere. This is rare as a funny Chevy Chase movie since Caddyshack. Yeah, you're right. It, that, that is rare. You didn't like the vacation movies? No. Christmas vacation. Movies. The heel of the rim. Buckley's shot is off the mark, and the rebound. T.J. Parker. Parker and a shot the backcourt, and when these two guards play well, and especially when one of them scores it, they uh, generally step to the next level, this team. They all of a sudden have a few more possibilities besides McCusich and Young. Well, look at Lowe just harassing T.J. Parker, the primary ball handler for Northwestern. Parker around a screen by Tolich. Nicely done. Well, you know, Bill Carmody this morning was saying that he feels that Purdue is the most aggressive and most physically aggressive team on the defensive end of the uh, Big Ten. Ball knocked out of bounds. Quick hands by Bakusic coming from behind to deny the post feed to Kiefer. And the statistics bear that out, Wayne, particularly when you take a look at how Purdue defends the three-point shot. They're tops in the league in that category. Opponents only shooting 29%. We're interested really to see how that plays out. Northwestern averages over seven and a half made threes a ball game. Tops in the conference as well. Kiefer inside of the block. Matt Kiefer's first from the field. Tied in the early going. Opening two and a half minutes of this first half from Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, Indiana. Great to have you with us tonight. Pashad sets it up. Picked up. Young. Here's Tolich. Parker off the screen. Oh, there's the cut by Tolich and the score and a foul. Excellent two-man game right there, Wayne. The little dribble handoff. Take a look at it right here. The two-man game. And then Tolich wisely slips the screen. Parker finds him. Nice early start for Yvonne Tolich. Five quick points here in the early going. With a chance to add to it, David Teague picks up a foul. It is his first, first foul of the game. Here's a look at Tolich. And again, he's come in, and he's had injury problems throughout his career at Northwestern. Is that all last year with the tendonitis problem in his knees and, and really was not much of a factor in the non-conference slate as well, but his minutes have picked up as the conference season has gotten underway. Teague. Watched by his shot. His shot has become a good defensive guard for Northwestern. Long arms went to be very disruptive in the passing lanes. Extremely effective against Wisconsin on Saturday. Zone defense, Northwestern. Out of the corner, wide open. Teague, and normally he's deadly from there. Makusic the rebound. Parker on the push. Really going in this first half. 
Western hasn't missed from the field yet and has been very patient offensively. Makusic left unattended. Heel of the rim with his first offering of the game. And here comes Brandon McKnight spinning into the lane. Tolich the rebound. Tolich has really been solid for Northwestern on both ends early going. Parker got into the air, and what do we have? Got a foul call, or is it just out of bounds Northwestern? Apparently it'll be just out of bounds Northwestern. There is Gene Cady. Doesn't like the start his team is off to. A little, bit, play. little bit of a rub there from Vakuzic. Nice job of coming from behind and knocking away. Northwestern retains possession. Tolich bears watching. Keeper out to get him. A lot of talk here in West Lafayette today about Purdue maybe going to some zone defenses. They were effective in bringing them from behind in three games this season already. But Gene Cady has great disdain for the zone. Down to five to go on the shot clock and the steal, Brandon McKnight. McKnight takes it in himself, scored, and a foul. Yes, it counts. I think they got Hashad right there. And Wayne, if you're going to give a foul, if you take a look at it right here, Hashad number 14, if you're going to give a foul, get your money's worth. Make sure that the shooter cannot get the ball above his shoulders. Don't do the little swipe and allow him to go and continue, as McKnight was able to do on that possession. And now McKnight seeks a three-point play. As quiet as the library here. And the rebound saved by Northwestern. Good block out inside that time. And now Hashad sets it up. To watch it in to give Tolis a little bit of a blow. He's coming off a very good performance. Four or five from behind the arc against Wisconsin on Saturday. He really helped open that game up, Sean. He, he was tremendously effective early on. That set the tone. And the thing that surprised us was that Wisconsin never came out to get him for the most part. Young from the outside. Keeper the rebound. Brandon McKnight in transition for Purdue. A little crossover by McKnight, and we've got a foul coming up before the shot attempt. Nice use of the crossover there in the open floor by Brandon McKnight. Opening five minutes of play, we're all even at seven apiece. Kenneth Lowe made his presence felt early in this game from the outside. <laughs> this is just what I've been saying for years. High school ballers just aren't prepared for the NBA. That's funny. They're saying the Dolphins secondary is unstoppable. I was just saying the same thing. Sometimes, 72 inches is a foot, 24 inches a mile. Welcome to the dance floor. Here, a straight line is a curve. You think you got the touch? Put it down the windshield of a car and make a stop on the hood. You want a gimme? When you can do it with your eyes closed, that's a gimme. See David Duvall in the PGA Tour's best this season on ABC. You set. Check it. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm here. Straight out of your nightmares. <laughs> excuse me? Excuse you nothing. I'll excuse you as soon as we play a little football. You understand me, sweet tooth? You don't play football. <laughs> Every day I do ESPN NFL football with the first person football feature. Wanna wanna wow. Because I don't play. You know something? Uh oh, there you go. The little birdie's talking to me. He's saying Seth can't mess with you. Seth too slow. Rated E for everyone all-new season. You have a guy who had a tremendous temper. He was going to come after you. A world premieres. Very was a walking highlight. Why didn't you want to break that record? I don't know. Brand new shows. Only in America for the Don King happened. The award-winning. I got excited. Yes, ho! Because he told me not to. Sports Century. 8 p.m. weeknights. Only on ESPN Classic. The crowd loves it here. Katie Court at Mackey Arena. Purdue and Northwestern tied at seven apiece in the opening five minutes of this first half. Earlier tonight, Indiana prevailed at Penn State. 
So update the Big Ten standings, and the Hoosiers move up a little bit here with that win. Indiana now 6-4, and four, and Purdue would like nothing better than to catch them at 6-4, and four. and I don't think anybody's out of it. You know, Wisconsin is playing on the road at Iowa tonight. That'll be no easy mark for the Badgers, who have uh, mostly road games left in their season. And Iowa playing with a, a great deal of confidence. They had a big win against Indiana earlier uh, this week, or actually last week, and Jeff Horner playing as well as anybody in the conference right now for the Hawkeyes. Player of the week in the Big Ten. Teague leaves that one short. Jatim Young may be the best rebounding guard in the country, according to Gene Cady. Snares it for Northwestern. Cady has great respect for this Wildcat team. He was effusive in his praise of their victory over Wisconsin. Offensive foul coming up on Dewanchich as he barreled through the lane. Yeah, just not a smart play by Dewanchich. Gets in on the dribble penetration, but watch what he does. He leaves his feet and then take your pick right there. Two Boilermakers slide over and take the punch. Still tied at seven apiece. Busher in the ball game now for Purdue. There's the turnover story. Two by Northwestern. Both of these teams take care of the basketball, though. They're among the leaders at assist to turnover ratio. Kenneth Lowe and Northwestern showing a zone here once again. They've done a great job of mixing up their defenses during the course of the Big Ten season, really keeping opponents on their toes. And Brandon uh, make that uh, low step out of bounds on the baseline. Kenneth Lowe ran out of real estate there. I think you're right, you know, Sean. And, and here's the other thing. We get a look at it right here as if we doubt the referee. We always like that visual proof. I think you're exactly right on Northwestern. They mixed up their defenses to the point, and certainly with matching up, that Wisconsin was hesitant all day on offense and could never get into a flow Saturday in Evanston. A foul coming up on Purdue here. And in addition to mixing up their defenses last Saturday against a very, very good Wisconsin team, Northwestern was able to take those turnovers, Wayne, and capitalize on them, getting some easy shots early, which allowed them to build a big lead. Pusher guilty of the foul. Tim Young gets to the rim, misses at point blank range. Teague the rebound. Austin Parkinson. Back to Teague. Parkinson has played very well of late. Keeper on the turnaround. Nicely done. His second for the field. He's got four. Nice job by Keeper. That little inside pivot move made famous by Jack Sip. I know I'm showing my age, but <laughs> turn and face the defender, create space, hit that intermediate jump shot. Parker, deep three. Busher had the rebound for a moment. It's taken off the floor by Teague. Here comes Parkinson with a shot in pursuit. On the wing, Kenneth Lowe. Like that Teague on the shot and the rebound taken out by Jatim Young. The transition defense by Purdue getting back. And again, the pressure. And turnover, Northwestern. But Kusich bumped into his own man, T.J. Parker, and dribbled it out of bounds. Take a look at that last basket, Wayne, by Kiefer. Now watch what he does. Catches it, turns the inside pivot, drop that foot, and it creates space between the offensive player, Kiefer, and the defender, Duwanchich. He doesn't come out and contest it. Knocks down that jump shot. Nice play by the sophomore. Is that a move you worked on uh, as you grew up following uh, Jack Sickman's career? I, I worked on it. There's a difference between working on it and getting good at it. <laughs> Parkinson would like to go inside once again, but the zone taking away that option. Kiefer on the block. Down to 15 to go on the shot clock. Busher, quick turn into Wachich. Keeper inside, no, but a foul. And if you're Purdue right now, you have to be very pleased, not only with the production of Kiefer, but the fact that he's been more aggressive than I think we've seen in the last two or three ball games. He's starting to look for a shot, and then on this offensive rebounding opportunity, he goes up in traffic, is able to gather, and I think by the time this time next year, maybe when he's a senior, he'll be able to finish that play because that upper body's going to fill out a little bit. Foul was on his shot, his second personal foul. Keeper misses the first of the line. Evan Seacat comes in, and Hashad uh, unhappy with the call. By Ed Hightower, has a seat on the bench. Keeper makes one out of two. He's got five points here in the early going of this one. And into the ball game quickly now. Matt Carroll for Purdue, replacing Kiefer. 
Pressure in the backcourt now by Purdue. Wanamaker's trying to get on a little bit of a run here. And here's a look at the Wildcat drought. Not quite long enough for federal assistance, but they're talking about it in Congress. That'll be a committee. To, yeah, that'll be a committee for a long time. Seacat, deep three. And if you're Purdue, Wayne, you have to know the scouting report and know that that's exactly what it is. The Seacat's in there to do, knock down the three. The board of the makers got caught up on a switch, did not talk it through, allowing the clean look for Seacat. Tied at 10. Arkansas again sets the floor. Boy, has he played well, dishing it off the last couple of uh, games for Purdue. He's second in the Big Ten at assist to turnover ratio. We could go ahead 12 assists, no turnovers in the win of Penn State. Markinson provides some senior leadership on this team. Looking to create a shot for himself. And got the bounce. The reason he doesn't start, Sean, is that he doesn't, he's not enough of an offensive option, but you wouldn't know it by that move there. Northwestern trailing by two. Here's Young. Jumps into the lane. Nicely done. To Tim Young. His first from the field. And Purdue rotating different defenders on Young, trying to keep a fresh body on him. Teague just not able to slide with him. Nice job of splitting the double team by Jatim Young. Think about Jatim Young. He's so active, number one, whether he's got the ball or not. And he's physical, number two. So you're going to need more than one body on him. Arkinson. And Young on a reach there gets called for the foul. And not a good foul at that point. The first on Young. Fifth on the team. And we've got a timeout. Just over 11 minutes left to go. We are first half at Mackey Arena. Jatim Young jumps into the lane, and Northwestern has caught Purdue. Just like America, hockey's become great through the contributions of immigrants. And here at the factory, we follow that example. Loli here is from Finland. Sergei's Russian. That's Kembo. We're not sure where he's from. The point is, is even though we're all from different cultures, we all speak hockey and English, mostly. The NHL on ESPN, made in America, delivered on Thursdays. Home is where the hoop is. With ESPN Full Court, you'll get the most out of the second half of the college basketball season. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-DIRECTV, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. ESPN presents... You stay down and now you explode. Basketball Fundamentals with Coach Rick Pitino. It's a discipline. It's an organized plan of attack. Learn to improve your offensive game from one of the best in college coaching today. Go through the foul with this highly focused, Come personal, on. one-hour workout. you got to be ball tough. you got to show it and be aggressive with the ball. To order, call 1-800-463-3399 or go online at www.patinovideo.com. It's the key to reaching your potential. Mackey Arena at West Lafayette, Wayne Larrabee and Sean Morris, Purdue and Northwestern and a good one so far, tied at 12 apiece. Both of these schools, Sean Hamp, wins over quality competition. You take a look at the first win for Purdue. They won the Great Alaska Shootout. Kenneth Lowe was the MVP up there. Had some, all, some quality wins over Illinois and Wisconsin and then Northwestern. Beat Illinois when they were a top 25 team and they're coming off their best performance of the season last Saturday in the big home win over Wisconsin. Purdue working it offensively now. Pusher, double teamed in that zone for a moment. Low shakes loose, baseline over Vakusic. Seacat gets the rebound, it bounces right to him. The big body's flailing away at it, he was just waiting for it. Vakusic, nice catch. 
Takes Busher to the right hand. Tom Clark, a definitive call, a push against Brett Busher. His second personal foul, third on the team. And a nice job by Bakuzic of playing possum there. He caught the ball on the baseline and kind of stood up. And when he did that, the defender, Busher, relaxed himself, got up out of his stance, which allowed him then to make the quick move and draw the contact. You know, people talk about Bakuzic. He's among the leaders in three-point field goals per game in the Big Ten, but I think he's an excellent post-up option. Because he can score around the rim with either hand. He'll, he can finish with the left hand. As a matter of fact, they'll post him on the right block and let him come into the lane and shoot that baby hook with the left. You know what, Sean? You'd be surprised how many people on the next level oh. can't use both hands. Because as Allen Iverson said, we're talking about practice. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say it quite that way, but I'm glad you cleaned it up yeah, for us. <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> Jatibian. Breaking down Kenneth Lowe, very solid defensively. Here's the Kusic. Good ball movement. Oh, my goodness. Another situation. How wide is that court? Is this one a little narrower? We've seen a couple of times Northwestern stepped out of the side. And those are the types of turnovers that really come back to haunt a team because they're really unforced. There wasn't any ball pressure. Just stepped on the outline. You, you don't think it's the elevated court now, do you? No, I don't think it's high enough to get a nosebleed. <laughs> Not that much elevation. Got a foul coming up. They got Kiefer, Kiefer setting the baseline screen there. His first personal, fourth on the team. So I would say in these first 10 minutes, this game being called fairly tight. And the players are going to have to adjust to that. Took a look in the lower right-hand corner, yep. trying to free up low. Kiefer did not maintain his ground as Gwantich tried to get over the top. There's the turnover situation. When you're a team like Northwestern, Wayne, that doesn't rebound extremely well, you really want to limit the turnovers because you absolutely need to shorten the ball game because you're not going to get any second chance opportunities. And there's the fifth of the ball game, a five-second call. So the turnovers piling up on Northwestern, a team that again takes care of the basketball very well for the most part. They average just 12 turnovers a game. Kenneth Lowe. Over to Wancic, heel of the rim. Wancic quick to the ball. Here comes Jutim Young. Seacant out of the corner for three. Well, that's what he does. Evan Seacant with his second triple of the night. And that's the second time, Wayne, that he's gotten a good, clean look. Carroll tried to close out in time, but if you're Purdue, you want to jam Seacat and make him put the ball on the floor. His is uh, limit, limited in that ability. Keeper on the block once again. He's got seven first-half points to lead the Boilermakers. Once again, that little turn and face, the inside pivot, very effective for the sophomore. Dewanchuk. The Kusic. Halfway down, wouldn't stay. Matt Carroll, the rebound. Parkinson in transition. Very smart point guard. I go right back inside to Kiefer. And they do. Kiefer a little bit higher post here. Kiefer screens. Bakusic shows. They try to go back to Kiefer. Knocked away by Tim Young. 12 to go on the shot clock. Buckley. And the rebound tip to Kiefer. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Well, if we were in France, that would be known as a garbage basket. <laughs> right place, right time. Around here, it's just garbage. Just garbage. And he collected it very nicely. Wednesday garbage day in your neighborhood? It is here. Today, yeah. Makusic, a little bit of a force there. Kenneth Lowe, the rebound. Here comes Parkinson. Purdue leading by one. Keeper baseline, a lot of air under that one. And Jatin Young to the rebound. And was forced out of bounds. So it'll be Northwestern basketball. Foul on Kiefer, his second. That's five on the team now. And changes now for Purdue. E.J. Nwankwo coming into the game. His brother plays at Ohio State. And uh, Brandon McKnight back on as well for Purdue. And I like this kid Nwankwo for Purdue. Watch him when he sets up on the block. 
Oh, beautiful feed. Blocked by Enrancel. Young again gets it blocked. He makes his presence known right on cue. Right away. Traveling on Kenneth Lowe as he jumped between defenders. Gene Cady can't believe the call. Purdue leads by the slimmest of margins thanks to the effort of Matt Kiefer with nine first half points. We'll be back. Look at this, three wide again. Outside, outside, clear. We tried a lot of different bar games. Many different bar games. Maybe too many. But nothing tops the Bud Light ESPN Quarter Bouncers Tournament. Compete locally and you could go to Vegas for the championship. And watch some other can't-miss games on ESPN's Big Monday. What's classic? Let the celebration begin! Classic is... He did it! He did it! Touchdown, Nebraska! Classic was... I don't believe what I just saw! Classic will always be... Nebraska! All the band is out on the field! Holy mackerel! I heard a turn around shot in the air! Let's do it! And this is the last of my time! Now that's classic. Western trailing Purdue by one earlier tonight, right before uh, the opening tip, the Provost Award was uh, given here at Purdue, and this is an award to recognize the athletic team with the most improved GPA from the previous semester. This is the first time uh, Purdue has presented the award, but uh, will obviously present it each semester now from here on out. It complements the awarding of the President's Cup. It's awarded to the team with the highest semester GPA each semester, but the Wanamaker basketball team most improved in the classroom in Purdue Athletics. So the kids have been hitting the books and we are at Mackey Arena, West Lafayette, Indiana, along with Sean Morris. I'm Wayne Larravee. Great to have you with us. Our ESPN Plus crew on hand. Purdue and Northwestern and there's a look at the shooting in the early going. It's really tailed off for Northwestern. They turned the ball over for their last five possessions, and Purdue has done a great job of challenging shooters the last few times. Trying to get to the back door. The pass knocked away. Stolen by Parkinson, who read the back cut beautifully. McKnight looking inside, and Wonkwo on the block. Seacat knocked it away from Parkinson, and then knocked it out of bounds. Evan Seacat came off the bench a few moments ago. 87 of his 108 field goal attempts this season have been from three-point land. This one, no exception. Both they have in common their standstill. And if you're Purdue, you want to get out, get a hand in his face, and make him put the ball on the deck. But a good job by Northwestern of allowing him to get open shots, one on the secondary break, one in the half-court set. Secan, an Indiana shooter from Paoli, Indiana. Ten to go on the shot clock. Brandon McKnight on the drive. Bakusic controls the rebound. Loses his footing. It's picked up by McKnight. The dish for Buckley. And Jatim Young controls that board. Purdue by one. Seacat again. A little bit too deep there. Knocked out of bounds by Jatim Young. It'll be Purdue basketball. And if you're Northwestern right there, probably too quick a three by Seacat. They didn't probe the Purdue defense. He can hit that shot, but you can always get that shot. Reverse the basketball, maybe get a cleaner look after the defense has had to work 15 to yeah, 20 seconds. You can seconds. get that shot with the time winding down on the shot clock. That's what the coaches say. So let's see if we can get something better. 6.22 to go. First half. Brandon McKnight. 
Again, Northwestern in the zone. Looks to be a 3-2 at the moment. They do some matching up out of the zone, and it takes some time for the offense to recognize. And Wonkwo into the lane. Rebound back tap by Dewanchich to Young. Six minutes to go, first half. Young on the drive. McKnight could not stay up with him and bumped him on the play. Brandon's first personal, six on the team. Tim Young just put his head down. There was no question as what he was going to try to do, turn the corner. McKnight, a little bit of a hand check. The officials catch it. T.J. Parker on the inbounds. Young has to track it down. Purdue extends the defense now. And watch Kenneth Lowe work off the ball, Wayne. Watch it, Tim Young. But Kusich, with his first from the field, came in averaging 14.7 points a game and has hardly missed in the last two games. Here's a look at the big night by Kiefer thus far. Kiefer at the moment getting a breather, so Purdue perhaps struggling, looking for points here. But they come from Kenneth Lowe. Or Buckley out of the corner. And Wonkwo with that wide body knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Wonkwo. The gene pool, the student section, not too happy as their leader with that call. Not very happy with an on call. The Kusich baseline again. And a nice interior feed right there from the right wing wing. They threw it away from the defense, and what it did is it allowed the momentum of Vakuzic to catch and go right up. Any pass that was off is not going to allow him to get that shot off in traffic. Three-point lead now for Northwestern Purdue on a drought. Brandon McKnight looking for room against that zone. And now they matched up man the man. Yeah, they're doing yes, a little. Yes, they have. Yep. yep, they've matched up. Got a foul at Kenneth Lowe is bumped by Seacat. They exchange glances, but nothing more than that. And Seacat picks up his first personal, trying to jam Kenneth Lowe. 16 fouls now on each side. Lowe will inbound. Low off to a one for three start from the field. Brandon McKnight sets the floor. Set a double stagger screen trying to free up Low. Low looking to deal it on Parker. Buckley inside had it stripped away. We've got a foul coming up. That's going to be on Jatim Young. That's two on him, I believe. Yep. Also the seventh on the team. I think they're going to call it on the floor. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. As at the line, Melvin Buckley, a sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois, had 10 points at Michigan Saturday. Purdue losing on a tip-in by Courtney Sims in that game, and Purdue has lost a number of games down the stretch. Seven losses for the Boilermakers, but if a couple of those close calls went their way, it'd be a much different story. Buckley makes good on a pair. And speaking of uh, close calls, six losses by a total of 17 points, four by two points or less, including Saturday. And Wayne, with the foul trouble right now for Northwest, you've got both Hashad and Young on the bench and that leads to a turnover because two of your primary ball handlers are out of the ball game. Dewanchich as he pulled up dragged his pivot foot and he hears about it from uh, Bill Carmody the head coach. Another turnover for Northwestern. Eight turnovers for the Wildcats already Sean an extremely high number for them. But they had a few games this year when they only had four in an entire game. Meanwhile Purdue lately has been very good in that area. Low baseline on the drive, drew contact on Bakusic. And the foul on Vedron is his first. And Wayne, Lowe's able to get to the rim because Nwankwo completely sealed off any defensive help. He stepped up to the right block and took away any weak side help that was able to get over there. And Kenneth Lowe able to get to the rim and draw the contact. 
Kenneth Lowe at the free throw line. Puts it on the first. He'll have another. And Wonkwo is 6'7", 260, a freshman out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. When Purdue was up there last week playing Michigan, and Wonkwo's family had the team over uh, for dinner, and, they, and Gene said, well, how do you want it to go? Do you want the seniors to go first, or do you want uh, your son to lead it away? And the dad said, and Wonkwo's dad said, no, no, no. You better not let EJ go first. He'll eat it all. <laughs> you can see. He's got a big frame to pack it under. I'm going to tell you all something right now. I will not lose. The true story of legendary coach Paul Bear Bryant. You're playing for the Bear. I don't care who you were in high school. We're going to work now. He taught his boys. Coach is the real thing. Thank God. But you Nothing left to fear. The Junction Boys. Detroit's going down! Red Wings got nothing! Loser! That's why I love ESPN Local on Insider. With local coverage of all my teams, I feel like I'm closer to home. The all-new ESPN Insider. Get inside. The biggest events in sports are on ABC Sports Championship Television. Holy moly! Oh, this boy. guy is something. The San Antonio Spurs are your world champions. This is magnificent. Awesome stuff. Amazing performance. This is ABC Sports Championship Television. Wayne Larity, Sean Morris, welcome back to Matthew Arena. Good ball game brewing here. Well, the makers have recaptured the lead by the slimmest of margins. We take a look at the balance of stats plan. We promise we'll see it soon. There it is. To Tim Young and Mohamed Ashad. Now, these are the two guys who do the bulk of the ball handling, or a lot of it, T.J. Parker being the other. And these two guys on the bench now with foul trouble, a couple of fouls apiece. So you miss them, obviously, on the offensive end, but just as much on the defensive end. Yes. They're very active. They're probably your two best on-the-ball defenders if you're Northwestern. And so Northwestern has to try to make do right now with Michael Jenkins, a walk-on, sharing the backcourt with T.J. Parker. Parker picked up by Kenneth Lowe. Here's Jenkins. They've been fronting Bakusic in the post. Doroncic to Bakusic. Left unattended this time from the outside. Good-looking shot halfway down. Wouldn't stay. Brandon McKnight. Under three and a half to go, first half. Teague in the corner, bottled up by Seacamp for a moment. And Wonkwo looks to advance it and does to Kenneth Lowe. Offensive foul on Lowe as Jenkins got to the spot, blocked and drew the call. Kenneth Lowe picks up his first personal. Take a look at it right here. Kenneth Lowe on the ball reversal. Does dip his shoulder just a little bit, Ooh, but uh, that's a close call. That's a tough call. Very tough call for Purdue. I don't know about that one. T.J. Parker. Nice back cut. Beautiful feed. See, can't miss the layup. That Maybe was need, as good as it gets. <laughs> Maybe need to dribble out another 20 feet and launch oh. it. You don't run that play any better than that. It's just the finish. Million dollar play, 10 cent finish. And one throw and the steal by Seacat. He had him, but he missed him. Just a little bit of a delay. Parker. Oh. And one throw the rebound. Seacat goes flying. Low sets up Teague on the wing. But Purdue has numbers right now. Now Seacat's back in the picture.
McKnight watched by Jennings. Kucic gambled on the steal, and Wonkbo had a chance to go with it, but didn't. Seven to go on the shot clock. Teague looks at the clock, raises up, and it's short. And Jenkins secures the rebound, and we get a quick whistle for a foul. Looked like Matt Carroll, perhaps, on that foul. Two coaches. I think that Brandon McKnight, I guess, on the reach. Carroll was there as well. McKnight's second versatile. That's eight on the team. Parkinson in for McKnight. Under two minutes to go now in this first half. Michael Jenkins goes to the line. As Sean mentioned, a walk-on doesn't get many minutes, as you can see. But with the foul trouble, he's going to have to play here tonight. Last touch by Purdue. And I think they're going to overrule it. Yeah, I think so, too. It looked like Bakusic got it, and Gene Cady is helping out <laughs> with the call. And the Gene Pool likes the uh, reversal. Yeah, if they didn't reverse that call, it might have been the obscene pool. Yeah. I think they were going to get a little upset. <laughs> Just a bit. Parkinson. <laughs> Low flashing baseline. Around Bakusic, Duancic came over to help out. Good help side defense, forced that miss. Tough shot by Kenneth Lowe, who has struggled here tonight. One for four from the field. Hit his opening shot and missed his next three. Waiting for Northwestern, you have to be pretty pleased that you haven't dug yourself a deeper hole with two of your better players, Hashad and Young, on the bench with foul trouble. They've pretty much been able to hold the fort with Jenkins, but you'll take a look right here. Nice job of rotating over defensively by Purdue. Draws the contact from Seacat. Slam that back door shut on Seacat, his second personal foul. I know. If I'm, if I'm Purdue, I'm going inside to Wonkwell because they've relied almost exclusively on the perimeter game. Probe inside first to make Northwestern collapse and then kick it out. Teague for three. Makusic the long arms, tipped out of bounds. It'll belong to Purdue. Kenneth Lowe and Evan Seacat are going at each other a little bit. And Ed Hightower is talking to Lowe about that very fact. Take a look at it right here. See how Lowe spins away and glares at Seacat. Motion to the official. Hightower taking control early before something happens. Parkinson to the inbound to David T. Under a minute to go, first half. We have been close throughout. Regardless of what happens in this possession for Purdue, Northwestern will get the ball back as there is about a 14-second difference between the game and shot clock now. Parkinson off the screen by Nwankwo. Cuts it back into the lane. To the right hand. T.J. Parker the rebound. No shot clock. Northwestern can wait for one last shot and a chance to take the lead into halftime. And Bill Carmody wants to set up a play. Timeout taken by Northwestern. 18 seconds left to go. Plenty of time for Northwestern to work the ball and get a good shot. They trail here by one. Elsewhere, earlier tonight in the Big Ten, Indiana over Penn State, 75 to 56. Wisconsin's got the lead in the first half at Iowa by five. And the Hawkeyes have been playing very well. Michigan leading Minnesota. Minnesota yet to win a conference game. Number one, Duke on top of Virginia in the second half of that one. St. Joseph still undefeated. They in Stanford. And South Carolina has the lead on Mississippi State. Providence leading Villanova. When and again right here. You were talking about St. Joe's and Stanford. Mississippi State is one late tip in from Kentucky of being undefeated themselves. Bakusic, time winding down. Seacat for three. Bring it up. 
Watermakers on the inbounds. Teague did not get it off in time. Evan Seacat with his third tray of the night gives Northwestern the lead. Seacat three out of four from the arc. Nine points. Northwestern leads it as we go to halftime. 22 to 20. It's fun to let the big dog eat. I like that crowd behind me saying, Grip it and rip it? Heck yeah. Crush it? Whenever I get the chance. I think it's a great way to start a hole. With the bang. I don't think it'd be nearly as much fun if you putted first. Introducing the first installment of the Inside X DVD series titled ESPN's X Games 9. This DVD is your backstage pass to X Games 9. It includes tons of behind the scenes footage with your favorite action sports athlete. On top of all the highlights and extras, this DVD also comes with a 63 minute bonus CD soundtrack featuring 16 cutting edge tracks. See X Games 9 through their eyes. Get Inside X. I'm grinding my teeth and I have goosebumps witnessing the madness. Every weeknight at 9, ESPN Classic is putting time on your side. Just pull up to the Classic drive through and watch the greatest games in history in only one hour. Each night, a classic game from a different sport. Each night, for one hour, you get to see the best teams in the biggest games. No additives, no preservatives, just the good stuff. If you've got one hour, pick up a classic to go. Take the all-new Classic drive through 9 p.m. weeknights, only on ESPN Classic. Welcome back to West Lafayette. The Purdue Boilermakers trailing the Northwestern Wildcats uh, 20 to 20. And Sean, as we take a look at this first half of play, it's hard to tell whose pace this game is being played at. But if I was to uh, favor one side or the other, it's being played, it seems like, at Northwestern's pace. It really is. And that's especially because of right now Northwestern hasn't even really taken very good care of the basketball, something that has been one of their hallmarks. And they have to feel very good about where they are, Wayne, because they're up at halftime with their leading scorer, Jatim Young, only having two points, but they've gotten a big lift off the bench from Evan Seacat. Evan Seacat has hit three out of four from the arc here tonight, and boy, he has opened things up for the Northwestern Wildcats as we get a look at him. The last shot of the half, dribble penetration by Vukuzic, forces Purdue to collapse, and all three threes that were made by Seacat all had one thing in common, when They were all standstill. A couple of them came as a result of dribble penetration. But once again, if you're Purdue, you have to find him, make him put the ball on the deck. All right. We've got more of our halftime activities coming up from Mackey Arena in West Lafayette. Thanks for staying up with us for the second half of our doubleheader. Northwestern by two at halftime. Jeremy Roenick. Ha ha. Yeah, playing with the big boys now. I'm going to put your stick on my wall because I've been playing ESPN NHL hockey. I've done the skills competition. <laughs> I'm fast, I'm agile, and I'm accurate. Don't get scared now. <laughs> Don't get scared. Yeah, I know you're nervous. Rated E for everyone. Let's go round the horn. Maybe Max is in reform. Next top sports writers. Learn your lesson. What is the best story here? Or you'll be gone. See you later, Rick. He'll shut you down. Say bye-bye. That's around the horn. Weekdays at five. Around the horn with Max Kellerman. Weekdays at five on ESPN. Yeah. You know it. The moment you see it. The moment you feel it. The United States has shocked Portugal. A play. A comeback. Jennifer Capriano. An upset so big. The most shocking, unbelievable, so unforgettable. All is well in the land of the champion. It's more than a game. It's an instant classic. And there's only one place you can find it. ESPN Classic. Now on ESPN Classic, the award-winning sports century. The most compelling stories in sports. 
Real Classics with Burt Reynolds, where sports and movies collide. Classic Big Ticket. Those who made history face off one more time to settle the score. Plus, when yesterday's game becomes one of the greatest in history, you get a second chance to see it as an instant classic. It's sports at its best. It's ESPN Classic. Start your day with something new. I wake up to cold pizza. It's guys in the know. It's a real baseball White House. And the better you feel, the more sex you tend to have. Oh, my goodness. Girls with the down low. The new bowl suited up as a jockey. This is a rocket with wheels. It's dark. That's dangerous. And the hall. I just wanted to keep skating. A little mayhem. <laughs> oh, my God. In the AM. <laughs> are you hot wings or are you cold pizza? You don't get this at any other morning <laughs> show. Wake up to cold pizza. The morning show with everything. Weekday mornings at 7 on ESPN2. Welcome back to Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, Indiana. Northwestern leading Purdue 22 to 20. Time now to hear from our member institutions, Northwestern and Purdue, in the Big Ten Conference. Northwestern University. Exceptional academic opportunities. Two beautiful lakefront campuses. Outstanding faculty. Lifelong friendships. Northwestern University in Chicago. A symphony of success. Construction is underway for the first three of a planned five new Purdue University research centers in a multidisciplinary complex called Discovery Park. If we take a CO2 here and a CO2 here and we release it. Purdue President Martin Jiske says Discovery Park will raise the level of research. We're moving from what we call the traditional model of autonomous research to a much more interdisciplinary team kind of research. And we're structuring it in an environment that facilitates its application. We're trying to create a more entrepreneurial environment, not only for the research, but for its application. We're actually looking head on. The largest of the five centers is the $58 million Burke Nanotechnology Center. It will deal with very small items on a scale of one billionth of a meter. And the sequences are like greater than 99% accuracy. The $15 million Bindley Bioscience Center will deal with cutting edge life science research such as genomics and proteomics. We call a complete transcription solution. A $7 million center for entrepreneurship that we hope will drive the research we do at Purdue into the economy. Here's, we're tracking your results. And, really and we're planning an e-enterprise center. That's the piece that deals with information technology, transportation, distribution, and logistics. And because there's a magnet here... At the final center, the Discovery Purdue. Learning Center, will help the learning process. Discovery Park is being funded primarily through private donations, with a total cost for buildings and programs of nearly $190 million. It's helping us both recruit and retain talented faculty, talented students. It's allowing us to interact with industries and companies that we simply wouldn't have the opportunity to interact with. The first building, the Entrepreneurship Center, is set to open this spring. begin shaping the minds that will lead America into the future? When do we lay the groundwork that will allow our businesses to thrive? When do we start preparing our nation for the next revolution in technology? At Purdue, the answer is now. fans embody the spirit of college basketball. They support their favorite teams and conference with passion and loyalty. Their knowledge and class help set the Big Ten apart from the rest. So do your part the next time you cheer from the stands. 
show good sportsmanship and respect the fans, the officials, and the great tradition that is Big Ten basketball. Big Ten basketball. Good sports make great fans. Northwestern Wildcats play on the lead at halftime. T.J. Parker had three assists to help fuel the attack. And we'll be back with more of our halftime activities. Highlights are next. That's it for us. We'll see you next time. And we're clear. Heck of a show. That yeah, was good. I got two tickets. Tuesday night show. I thought we were in like 2J or, or something. Do you know who I am? Beat the Mets. Step right up and greet the Mets. Dan Patrick, do it, Scott. One for six, two for ten. Intimidated? Leave it in the trunk of your car with your tennis shoes. Worried? Come on. They make an oversized driver with a huge sweet spot, especially for this occasion. Afraid of the water? Ball's not. After all, you've done this 101 times in your head. Just make this number 102. Catch Rich Beam and the PGA Tour's best this season on ABC. If you want to crush it off the tee, stick it on the ground. Or just be able to find it after you hit it. We're here to tell you, all you need is three. 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 Introducing the Three Club Tour, developed by ESPN Golf Schools, presented by Lexus. Our philosophy is simple. Your driver, wedge, and putter. Hit them right, and your scores will drop. Register now and receive three clubs free. To find out more, log on to ESPNGolfSchools.com or call us. World-class golf instruction is coming to your town. Welcome back to Mackey Arena, West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue trailing at the moment, 22-20. Northwestern playing very well in that first half, although not having a good night as far as take care of the basketball goes. Their turnover's up a little bit, but nonetheless, they're hanging right in there. And the reason they're doing that part of it anyway, Sean, is they've been able to hold their own on the board. As a matter of fact, lead in the rebounding category. They lead in rebounding 18-16. to That's the good news for Northwestern. The bad news, they turn the ball over at an unpredictable rate for them. Uh, nine turnovers in the first half, a lot of those coming as an unforced variety, so Purdue's doing a pretty good job defensively, but getting scoring off the bench has been huge for Northwestern here in the first Absolutely. half. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the Shelter Insurance first half highlights of tonight's game. Well, it started with Kenneth Lowe, the first basket of the ball game. Gets Purdue off to a good start with the three, but it was Matt Keeper who was the story offensively for Purdue in the first half with nine first half points here. Nice little dribble drive and penetration here. This little stick back. When he got in foul trouble, Wayne, it was big trouble for Purdue. But for Northwestern, it was Evan Seacat who knocked down three threes off the bench. None bigger than this one right here, which sent Northwestern into the locker room with the 22-20 lead as well as the momentum. For your insurance needs, visit shelterinsurance.com to find the shelter agent near you. Seek shelter today. And the uh, first half stats. And, you know, if you take a look at this thing right here, and again, we mentioned the rebounding thing, shooting, uh, Purdue down around 28%. Northwestern, 4 of 10 from the arc. Remember, Purdue is number one of the Big Ten at defending the arc, allowing their opponents only 29% on three-point field goal attempts. And the bench points you mentioned, Keeper, nine points to lead Purdue in the uh, first half of play. We'll be back with the second half coming up after these messages. Your lips are so soft. Good. You're so sweet. Over 10,000 hopefuls gathered with a dream of becoming an anchor on ESPN Sports Center. For the dream job, baby! Welcome to the big show. First quarter action. You went three for three. Locked up in a tight one. 16 points in the first half. Back to you guys. Now, only 12 remain with a chance to claim the best seat in the world of sports as their own. A little bit of a ramalama ham dam. ESPN's dream job. Watch one fan's dream become a reality. Series premiere Sunday, February 22nd, 10 p.m. on ESPN. 
Muncie vs. Milan, the high school basketball game that inspired the Moody Hoosiers, and the greatest upset in basketball history. Now, it's been uncovered, rediscovered, and airing on national TV for the first time ever. The 1954 Milan Miracle and your classic big ticket with Milan's own Bobby Plump and his game-winning shot that made Indiana basketball history. Plus, we're live in Indiana 50 years later for the rematch between these two high school teams. It all starts at 6 Eastern, Saturday, February 21st on ESPN Classic. Hey, Tiger. Yo, Stu. How you doing? Good. We saw him for lunch? Uh, yeah. What do you say? Meet me in the lobby at 12.30? Perfect. Done. See you there. Bye, man. Gene Poole kids, that's for three-point field goals made. They'll put another three up there when they make another one, etc., etc. Kind of like at Yankee Stadium when Roger Clemens used to strike out people, they'd put up a K in the, down the left field line in the stands. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that for you. Purdue just one of six from the arc, however, in the first half of play. So not too many threes hanging in front of the Gene Poole. And the only made three was the first shot of the game that's, by Lowe. Yep, that was it. Northwestern starts on offense here as we begin the second half. Wayne Larrabee, Sean Morris, our ESPN Plus crew on hand at Mackey Arena. Akusic. Oh, nice look to Jatim Young. He gets it back for the putback. Nice leave at the rim by Vakuzic. Young missed the first offering, but able to clean up with the offensive rebound. Four-point lead, the biggest of the night for Northwestern. Young with just four points on two field goals. Very quiet for him, as you mentioned, so far. And his shot scoreless. Ball knocked away from Brandon McKnight. He's able to collect. David T gave up his dribble early, then threw it away. Mohamed Ashad in the passing lane. Parker catches up with it. The French connection backcourt of Parker from France and Mohamed Ashad from Morocco. Purdue out defensively. They've got a shot defended by Kiefer at the moment. Now he's picked up by Brandon McKnight. To Tim Young. Looking to go on Kenneth Lowe, and he's tied up. And what do we have? Jump ball or held ball situation in the alternating possession. The arrow pointing in favor of Purdue. And when we've talked about, if you take a look at the last play, the injury to Kenneth Lowe, but he's not the only Boilermaker who struggled with injuries this year. Buckley back in the lineup after having some foot problems. And even tonight, Yvonne Cartello, we have not seen him. We weren't sure if we would. He's had a little bit of a hip problem. But they really miss his inside presence, particularly when Kiefer had to go to the bench with those two fouls. And Cartello is in uniform, and he did participate in the shoot-around here this afternoon. Brandon McKnight. That makes you wonder, is it a medical situation that he's not in there, or is it a coaching decision? Could go either way. A shot in the passing lane again with those long arms you talked about. Northwestern, when leading at the half, generally they win. Purdue, they have struggled to come back when they've trailed at the half. But they've trailed by just two points here. Well, let's see, that's just not a smart play right there by Muhammad Ashad. You've got two fouls. You had to sit out a lot of the first half. There's no need to pick up your third foul so early here in the second half, particularly when the ball handler's a good 30 feet away from the rim. And not looking to shoot. You're right. So Hashad picks up his third personal foul. I really think he sets the table in many respects for Northwestern with his play in the passing lane. C certainly the spirit of the defense is Jatim Young. Now if you're to do, you might try to go right at him and get that fourth before the Bill Carmody can get him out of the ball game. Brett Busher looking inside a keeper who was so prominent early in the game till he picked up his second versatile foul. Keeper backing in on Duwanchic. Tough shot. Busher kept it alive. Back tapped it though to Young. Northwestern again with Young, Parker, Bashad, Duwanchic, and Bakusic on the floor. Oh, wow. Boy, Tegan and Bashad were really going at it. You throw a chair in there, you got a pay-per-view. <laughs> and T gets called for the foul, his second personal. Take a look at it down on the block, number two. Teague and four. <laughs> That's one point. He was going for the one-leg sweep. You know, even the Russian judge would have liked that one. 
And that's where in post play, Wayne, when you're trying to get position, you can get away with a lot more from the hips down. Once you start trying to gather position and gain position with the upper body, it makes it very easy for the officials to make the calls we saw right there. Young off the staggered screen. Parker sets the floor. Again, this game played decidedly at Northwestern's pace in the first half. The Kusic has it stripped away. Oh, nice play made there by Kiefer. Parkinson up and running, got into the air with nowhere to go. McKnight able to save. Coach Gene Cady imploring the crowd to get into it. He jumped up off the bench, pumped his fist. Young has it blocked partially by Kiefer, got it back, and then the foul over the back by Kiefer is his third. And just like Hashad for Northwestern, Kiefer getting that third foul is big here. We're not even to the 16-minute mark of the second half. Sean, again, nine points for Kiefer early in the first half. There, that's The foul is committed right here. Yep, you got him. We got the young on the right shoulder as he's going for the offensive rebound. One point lead Northwestern. Dewanchic on the block against Kiefer, backing in. A shot for three. Parker in for the rebound. Oh, and he missed the layup. Point blank. Parker has struggled this season offensively. The smallest guy on the floor is able to get the offensive rebound but not execute the layup. Lowe gives up three, and then they've got a block on Vedran Vakusic. Vakusic is second personal foul, second on the team. For some reason, the clock's running right now, and it's a dead ball situation. They must have taken uh, three or four seconds off yeah. the clock right there. Wayne. You're right. They did. I don't know if they'll correct that or not. We'll see. That would have to be brought to the officials' attention by the coaches, I would assume, right? Busher to Parkinson. Busher inside. The Kusic block tried to draw the foul. They didn't call it, and Busher's got his first two points of the game. And the Boilermakers are back on top as we begin to seesaw the second half. Parker to his shot. The Kusic around Kiefer. Tough pass there. Didn't have the angle. And two close quarters for to Tim Young. Meanwhile, the Boilermakers miss fire on the break. Gene Cady can hardly believe the back-to-back uh, -back turnovers he's seeing. He's trying to fire this crowd up. He's got his Boilermakers up by the slimmest of margins. Hey, I'm Stan. I'm one of the guys making hockey here at the factory. You know, there's a time when Made in America was just a fact. Soon it became a rallying cry for the whole country. It stood for pride, integrity, hard work. See it made in America stamped on something, let people know that that was a darn fine product. Some people think hockey's made in Canada. The NHL on ESPN, made in America, delivered on Thursday. Hmm, they're saying running back by committee is bad for football. I was just saying I see the relevance of committees, just not for running backs. <laughs> Dan Patrick just used the word unitard in his column. I was just saying unitard is one of the most underutilized words in the English language. Wait, if I was thinking that, then they were thinking that. Cut. As a former Florida State halfback, ESPN Classic thought I'd be the perfect host for real classics. They knew I had all the moves to present semi tough the Lone of Shard, and even great sports movies I didn't start. What? Okay, here's the play. 8 o'clock, Sunday night, ESPN Classic. You stop at the couch, and the best sports movies of all time will be right there. Real Classics with Burt Reynolds. Where sports and movies collide. <laughs> Big Ben Wallet. 
I think you're going in the wrong direction, right? Listen, dog, I'm beat. Some other time. Oh, 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 dog, huh? Let me tell you something. ESPN NBA basketball. I've lived the 24-7 mode. And I've achieved the ISO motion. I can clear the court to one side and take it one on one. Don't nobody is better than Reg. Ha <laughs> ha. The way I dunk on you is going to look unorthodox. Ready to eat for everyone. Go, boilers! 152nd meeting between Northwestern and Purdue. We begin to seesaw here in this second half with Purdue leading by one elsewhere. Earlier tonight, Indiana beat Penn State. Wisconsin leading Iowa at halftime by seven down in Iowa City. Michigan's got the advantage on Minnesota by 11. And Duke knocks off Virginia. And St. Joe's remains undefeated, 81-67 over Dayton, and that may have been the last chance they have to lose in the regular season. Because Dayton is a very good team. They were a top 25 team in yes. their own right, won the Maui Classic earlier this season. Duancic. Here's Evan Seacan. Nine points in the first half for Seacan and three trays. Putting five minutes, second hand. Seven to go on the shot clock. Dewanchich jumped at by Kiefer. Here's Seacat for three. Kiefer there for the rebound. Good defensive sequence by Purdue. Get Northwestern exclusively on the outside. Parkinson trying to hit Busher at the back door. I'm not sure Brett Busher was expecting that pass, but it was a good one. Gene Katie. Watch. <laughs> you can, on every play, the reactions of uh, Gene Cady are just special to watch. They really are. Talk about a guy whose intensity has never waned in 24 years. High turnover game for both sides so far. Bakusic looking for room. Keeper right with him defensively. Nice show by Keeper right there. Tim Young, tough shot inside, good move off the block. Young with six on three from the field. Quiet night for him so far. Nine lead changes, five ties in this game. Visitors leading by one at the moment. That's, that's a 5-0 mini Purdue runway. Which is a gargantuan run when you consider the way this game has been played. Keeper inside. And uh, they've got a foul coming up on Dewanchich. Got him with, in the back with the knee. Second personal on Dvorak Dewanchich. Take a look right here at the little drop step coming up right here. Able to turn the corner. And you see right there the example of the great upper body strength by the seniors and Tim Young. Parkinson sets up the offense. 2-3 zone for Northwestern. Busher left on a tenant. Buckley the rebound, stripped away, stolen by Young. Gene Cady talked to us earlier today, Sean, and he said when playing defense against this Princeton style of offense and the patience of Northwestern, focus, concentration, big keys, drive right there by T.J. Parker, his second from the field, and he'll go to the line. <laughs> that just goes to show you how unpredictable this ball game could be. He had an uncontested layup a few possessions ago and missed it. Here he's able to take the contact and hit one fading away. If you remember, he had an offensive rebound and missed an uncontested layup on the same side of the basket earlier this half. That's like the guy who misses the three-foot butt and then drains a 30-footer on the next hole, you know what I mean? <laughs> Where did that come from? Parker makes a tough shot looking for a three-point play. Off the heel to the rim, Parkinson saves to Busher. But the Cruises better be careful. The last thing that Northwestern needs is for him to pick up a cheap foul in the backcourt. Bakusic, two personal fouls. Pusher trying to free himself on the block. And what do we have? Reset, I think. They, yep. they got a kick. Kicking violation. And the official telling Pusher and Bakusic to play nice. I'll tell you what, it's been rugged on the blocks tonight. It has. Regardless of who's been down there. If it's been Seacan and Lowe or Jatim Young and David Teague and Busher and Vakusic. 
The inbound to Parkinson. Buckley, quick shot. Parker there for the rebound. Parker on the push. Northwestern leading by three. Their biggest lead was four. Oh, nice. Back cut for Kusic. Beautiful feed from Parker. Nice well done. Nice job by Parker Wayne of keeping the dribble alive. And as soon as the defender turned their head, that's when Vakuzic was able to turn, get to the rim, and a good job by Parker of delivering it to him. 12.38 to go in this first half. Northwestern enjoying its biggest lead. Back cut, Princeton offense. Parker to Vakusic. Tomorrow's special is going to be vegetarian lasagna, but since spaghetti with marinara sauce was served today, the staff did not feel it was appropriate to have two Italian dishes in a row. Therefore, the new special is shepherd's pie and lentil soup. How did these two guys get a show on ESPN Classic? By accident. Oh, uh, is this my camera? Welcome to Cheap Seats. Every Wednesday. I'm Jason, this is Randy. Brace yourself for a new take on some more sports. If Ron Jeremy worked out, that's what he'd look like. A comedy uh, show for the serious sports fan. Wow. From two guys uh, like this. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. Cheap Seats, 10 p.m. every Wednesday. Only on ESPN Classic. We get writer's block just like anybody else does. You just have to work through it. Stink. Stink. John, Stink. five minutes. Good. Great. Deadline's looming. Pressure's intense. Got the opening yet? I'm gonna need a minute. You just look to find a moment of inspiration. What rhymes with Gagne? It's magic when you find that right word and it, and it just fits that thing. If you were writing a story on uh, the BCS, how would you start it? Excuse me. I'll wait. Here. Pass the ball. Pass the ball. Drink enough. Ooh. Smell that? All right, AI. Fast break. You're a ball hog. Pass the ball. Offensive foul. Hello. Come on. Too slow. What do you mean you didn't see that? Technical foul. The NBA on ABC can't get enough. Wayne Larrabee, Sean Moore. Sean, Northwestern is last in rebounding margin of the Big Ten. Minus 8.2 rebounds per game. But when they've got a rebounding edge, or if they're just close, and they trailed Wisconsin by just two, 30 to 28 in the game on Saturday, and one in going away fashion. If they're like this right here, if they can win this battle, that really enhances their chances on the road. And the key within that stat, Wayne, is the fact that they've given up very few second-chance opportunities yes. to Purdue. And that is what has haunted them, particularly in the rebounding area, our second and third chance scoring opportunities for the opposition. By and large, they've limited that here this evening. You know, the thing about Northwestern is their guards have all, always been good rebounders. Their bigs are rebounding it now better than they have in the last two years. Western in the zone. Kenneth Lowe has been quiet tonight. Outside of the first shot of the game, very quiet. Buckley for three, all partially blocked it looked like by Vakusic. Right now for Northwestern, Wayne, you want to remain patient on the offensive end of the floor. Don't take any quick shots. Make Purdue work defensively. They've seen the dividends with the last backdoor cut that that can pay. Vakusic. Oh, nice. Beautiful Step. move. They drawn Vakusic with eight points. And just a splendid move on the block. You don't see that kind of footwork at any level of basketball. Very rarely anymore, Wayne. The up and under and step through. Great move by the sophomore. Purdue trailing by seven. Biggest lead of the night for Northwestern. Parkinson jumps into the lane. Tough catch there for Buckley. But just no flow to Purdue offensively in the half-court set. Low able to clear. Kenneth Lowe now with 10 points. He's got two triples, a couple of free throws, and now a conventional field goal for two points. That was just a great individual effort by Lowe because they're not getting the kind of spacing yep. and the ball movement that we've seen from Purdue, particularly in the early part of the Big Ten season. And Sean, I don't know if it's the 
variance of zone defenses and then man-to-man -man or matchups that Northwestern's been going to, but Wisconsin was the same way on Saturday, never in sync. Parker missing from deep. Wisconsin could never get into a rhythm against Northwestern. Deep three, David T. Nice block out by Parker down there on a much taller Buckley. These Northwestern guards are not afraid to go to the boards. And you're right, they've been one and done most of the night for the Boilermakers. That's too quick a shot right there, and it leads to a, just a silly foul by Bakuzic. That's his third. Fourth on the team, but you're right. Third personal foul, and Phil Carmody can't believe that one. The sophomore of Adron Bakusic heads to the bench. Purdue coming from behind, trailing by five, needs more from Kenneth Lowe. <laughs> this is just what I've been saying for years. High school ballers just aren't prepared for the NBA. That's funny. They're saying the Dolphins secondary is unstoppable. I was just saying the same thing. Sometimes, 72 inches is a foot, 24 inches a mile. Welcome to the dance floor. Here, a straight line is a curve. You think you got the touch? Put it down the windshield of a car and make a stop on the hood. You want a gimme? When you can do it with your eyes closed, that's a gimme. See David Duvall in the PGA Tour's best this season on ABC. You set. Check it. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm here. Straight out of your nightmares. <laughs> excuse me? Excuse you nothing. I'll excuse you as soon as we play a little football. You understand me, sweet tooth? You don't play football. <laughs> Every day I do ESPN NFL football with the first person football feature. One and one wow. Because I don't play. You know something? Uh oh, there you go. The little birdie's talking to me. He's saying Seth can't mess with you. Seth too slow. Ready to eat for everyone all new season you have a guy who had a tremendous temper he was going to come after you a world premieres very was a walking highlight why didn't you want to break that record i don't know brand new shows only in america for the don king happen the award winning i got excited yes, because he told me not to sports century 8 p.m weeknights only on espn classic Back at Mackey Arena, Northwestern leading it by five. Just over ten minutes to go, second half. Time now for the Farm Bureau game summary. Sean, what do these numbers tell you? Well, usually Purdue dominates in the area of bench scoring. That's not the case here this evening. All nine points off the bench for Northwestern coming from Seacat. But the most stilling stat is the last one right there, rebounding. That's something that Northwestern has been in the minus eight category all year. They've more than held their own against the larger Boilermakers on the glass here this evening. McKnight comes up short. Kiefer over the back, guilty of the foul. That's his fourth. He has not scored since the first half. He had nine first half points. Matter of fact, nine points in the first 15 minutes of the game, and then picked up his second personal foul, went to the bench, and Northwestern got right back into it. Right now, to Northwestern, the last couple of times, I thought they shot way too early in the shot clock. Make Purdue work defensively, and if you're going to do anything, work it to try to go inside and get Kiefer right out of the ballgame. Seacant from deep. Low it's off the rebound. Parkinson back into the game for Purdue. Kiefer mishandles at the baseline, and it's tipped away, and they got a foul on Parker. Tom Clark and Parker can't believe Clark made that call. Parker's second personal. That's five on the team. Boy, the reactions of players and coaches in this game to fouls tonight has been really uh, animated. Keeper has to leave, and Matt Carroll comes in off the bench for Purdue. Northwestern's held the advantage off the bench as well. Nine to four in bench points. McKnight, Parkinson, two point guards in there with Kenneth Lowe for Purdue. Boy, Busher and Bukusic going at it on the block as well. Pusher guilty of the offensive foul. 
But Kusic drew that foul by just flinching back a little bit. The official thought that Busher gave a good stiff elbow. I don't think he did any, anything of the kind. No, but once again, even though there wasn't much contact, <laughs> where it was, Wayne, was up top. Up top, yep. Because You're right. you can do just about anything you want from the hips down, but when you extend that arm, and Bakusic did a good job of selling it as well. Hey, I'll tell you something, you know, part of uh, defense is being a good actor, you know. You've got to be a bit of a thespian. Kicked by Busher, knocked it out of bounds. Now, now, sell the foul here. If there's any contact at all or anything close to it, you're Bakusic. There it is. Yeah. Just a little slap yeah. there. I don't think there's much to it. That baseline camera made it look worse than it was. Absolutely. And you know what? I mean, as long as you don't get whiplash, I <laughs> yes, guess. I guess. Trying to sell it, it's a good play. Oh, man. Vedron comes down to the floor of the next, uh, the next uh, possession with one of those neck wraps. You know that uh, it was real. And Purdue showing a little bit of zone right here. Traffic, nice job on the double team. Watermakers looking to capitalize off the turnover. Brandon McKnight. His second from the field, he's got four. Now Purdue back to within four now. Crowd comes to life. McKnight overplayed on the pass to Jatim Young. And Wayne, you're showing a little zone here. Yep. They don't play a lot of zone. And usually they don't play zone till they're down by about 16. Baseline, Parker unable to handle. It'll belong to Purdue. That's a tough pass to try to throw through a lot of traffic from that high left wing to Parker, because even if he catches it, Wayne, what is he going to do with it? Mackey Arena, West Lafayette, along with Sean Morris, I'm Wayne Larrabee. There's the shooting situation. Both teams in the 40% range. Back Purdue down around 31%. They've really struggled here tonight on their home court. McKnight pull up for two. Halfway down, wouldn't stay, but Kusic the rebound. Swings it away from Busher. Tell you what, it has not been for the faint of heart under the basket tonight. Those big guys, those big bodies are banging into each other. Well, they're not wearing mouth guards just for show. Yeah. Young, double teamed. And again, Purdue in the zone. 2 3 looks like at the moment. See if they match up out of it. Young over the zone. Seacats got the rebound. Fresh shot clock, Northwestern. We're inside of eight minutes to go in the game. Young. And here's T.J. Parker. Seacat. Vakusic for three. To Tim Young knocked it out of bounds. It'll belong to Purdue. One thing the zone has done, it's forced Northwestern exclusively to the outside. Take it away all to the back cuts, at least for a few moments. Purdue on the comeback trail at home. Just like America, hockey's become great through the contributions of immigrants. And here at the factory, we follow that example. Wally here is from Finland. Sergei's Russian. And that's Kembo. We're not sure where he's from. The point is, is, even though we're all from different cultures, we all speak hockey and English, mostly. The NHL on ESPN, made in America, delivered on Thursday. Home is where the hoop is. With ESPN Full Court, you'll get the most out of the second half of the college basketball season. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-DIRECTV, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. ESPN presents... You stay down and now you explode. Basketball Fundamentals with Coach Rick Pitino. It's a discipline. It's an organized plan of attack. Learn to improve your offensive game from one of the best in college coaching today. Go through the foul with this highly focused Come personal on. one hour workout. You gotta be ball tough. You gotta show it and be aggressive with the ball. To order, call 1-800-463-3399 or go online at www.patinovideo.com. It's the key to reaching your potential. Northwestern 
Northwestern leading it. 32-29, 7.20 to go in this second half. Adron Bakusic has come to the fore with a couple of beautiful moves on the block. Well, he's been struggling from three-point range, 0 4, but he's done his damage around the rim here in the second half. Nice little catch on the block. Then a great delivery from T.J. Parker and the conversion on the opposite side. Now watch this move. Dribble in with the left hand. Up, step through, under. Great move. Excellent footwork by the sophomore. Oh, my goodness. Purdue resumes offensively. Brandon McKnight moves it across. McKnight and Teague and Kenneth Below on the perimeter. David Teague, quick three, short. Parker picks it off, and again, Northwestern continues to do a great job of cleaning up the defensive board. And a tough shot by Teague, Wayne. His body momentum was carrying him away from the basket. Purdue showing zone. Very active zone. Parker missing from the outside. Bakusic tried to keep it alive. Here what? comes Brandon McKnight. <laughs> McKnight trying to set up a play here. Busher trying to clear on the block. Teague doesn't have the angle for that pass. Here's Carroll. Now Kenneth Lowe. Nice job defensively by Parker. Northwestern employing zone. Now they match up. Jumping through Kenneth Lowe, beautiful move there. The Kusic with the foul trouble could not come over to make a more decisive defensive move on him to try to cut him off. And a nice recognition by the senior Kenneth Lowe. They struggle from the perimeter. He understands they need to get something going to the rim, takes matters into his own hands. Coming up on six minutes to go for the game. It's a one-point ball game. Seacat just short. Teague the rebound. And this zone has been very effective. Northwestern has gone scoreless against it the last five possessions. The other thing it's done, it's, it's allowed Purdue to dominate the boards on the defensive end. Low, right up for three! 15 for Kenneth Low. 10 in the second half. It's a 9-0 Boilermaker run and a two-point Purdue lead with 5.38 to go. Hang another three for the Boilermakers as they take the lead. Wayne, do you think that Purdue's happy to have uh, Kenneth Lowe back no, in the lineup? No, indeed. Took him a while to get going, Sean, but he's beginning to heat up. Great job of stepping through the double team. You mentioned it. Makuzic can't give the foul. He already has three. And then on a nice little rub screen from the baseline by Busher, allows Kenneth Lowe to get a good, clean look, get his feet set, knock down that three. 30-second timeout taken by Northwestern. Here comes Kenneth Lowe. He hit his first field goal of the game. The first field goal of the game, a triple out of the corner, and then did not reach the scoring column from the field for the remainder of the first half. And now just late here in the second half, he's begun to pick it up. Bill Carmody's team trailing by two now. And Wayne... Bill Carmody gets Muhammad Hashad back in the ball game in place of Seacat, looking for some dribble penetration probably against this zone because Northwestern has relied exclusively on the perimeter jump shot the last five or six possessions. Been a while since Northwestern scored from the field. Or scored, period. And both teams have experienced droughts in about three or four minutes. Tipped out of bounds by David Teague. It'll belong to Northwestern. Purdue now up defensively. Pressure on the ball there. And David T. Purdue settles into the zone, though. Bakusic. Oh, nice look. Bakusic on the drive. Offensive foul. Buckley had position, and Bakusic bowled him over. And on Vedron, it's his fourth. You take a look at it right here. And what Coach Bill Carmody was yelling at is that you couldn't quite see it, but in the left corner, rather than giving it to Bakuzic diving down the lane, they had a spotting up shooter in the left corner wide open. Watermakers with the lead in the ball. McKnight, Northwestern in its zone. The three, not that time for Buckley, the rebound to Wanchich. Western looking for the equalizing score or the lead with a triple. Bill Carmody gets a timeout. 4.38 left to go. 
32nd timeout taken here with 4.38 left to go in the game. And let's take a look at this shelter insurance stat splash. Well, you know, neither side getting to the free throw line. So much of this game has been on the perimeter, Sean. It really has, and not a lot of dribble penetration. Northwestern, as you can see, hasn't converted anything from the stripe. Purdue's been a little bit better. And if you're Northwestern in this timeout right now, even though he's been pretty much held in check offensively, I have to believe that you want to try to get the ball to your leading scorer, Jatim Young, preferably on the block. Maybe try to get something going to the rim because right now they've been exclusively a perimeter shooting team the last five or six minutes, and they've come up empty. You want to try to get the ball to Jatim Young on the block and make that Purdue defense react. The inbounds of T.J. Parker. Here's Mohamed Ashad. Bakusic quickly. Dewanjic to Young. Western gets pretty good spacing here. Purdue 1-3-1 it looks like at the moment. Parker deep three wide open. T.J. Parker now with seven. And Yet another lead change. And that's the first time in the last seven or eight possessions that Northwestern has made that zone work side to side. Purdue's done a very good job of keeping them good exclusively point. on one side of the floor. That ball reversal allowed Parker that open shot to the right wing. 11 lead changes as you saw on the screen a moment ago. Buckley is fouled. And that's the cruiser. That's it. If it is, uh, they're calling to Tim Young on the foul, the reach there. Third personal on Jatim Young. Seven on the team, though, so Melvin Buckley heads to the free throw line. Buckley has not scored from the field. He's two of two at the line. Hey, Buck, no, no, no. Dewanchic, the rebound. The most improved aspect, in my opinion, of Northwestern as this season has progressed is the play of their big people under the boards, both offensively and defensively. Bakusic for three. Heel to the rim that time. Backhand rebound to Teague. And you can live with that shot if you're Northwestern because Bakusic came in on fire from behind the arc. He's 0 of 5 here this evening, though. He was on fire from field period, hitting almost 60% of his shots in the last two games. Melvin Buckley looking to probe. Kenneth Lowe jumping in between defenders. Off the glass. Lowe with 17, and boy, did they miss him in the last three and a half games. But once again, a very heady play. Northwestern was giving him the 17-footer, but the shot fake allowed him to create space, get a better look, and use the window. 12 lead changes in this game. Purdue back on top by one. Under three minutes to go. Off the ball. Foul coming up on uh, Purdue. They got Kenneth Lowe. Apparently a push on one of the cutters. And that'll put Northwestern to the foul, and I believe that's their seventh, or is that only their sixth? Scoreboard has it at six at the moment. We've got a break in the action. They'll get it sorted out at the scorer's table. Kenneth Lowe jumps between defenders. The bank is open, and Purdue plays on the lead. Look at this, three wide again. Outside, outside, clear. Does he go to save it if it's sideways? Oh, 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 close. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh my God. Whoa, walk on the outside. And they're three wide. Oh. And the action keeps coming this season on ABC and ESPN. We tried a lot of different bar games. Many different bar games. Maybe too many. But nothing tops the Bud Light ESPN Quarter Bouncers Tournament. Compete locally and you could go to Vegas for the championship. And watch some other can't miss games on ESPN's Big Monday. What's classic? Let the celebration begin! Classic is... He did it! He did it! Touchdown, Nebraska! Classic was... I don't believe what I just saw! Classic will always be... Nebraska! All the band is out on the field! Holy mackerel! Our herd turn around, shot in the air! Let's do it! And this one will last the lifetime! Now that's classic.
five ties, 12 lead changes. At the moment, Purdue plays on the lead just under three minutes to go in the game. And Kenneth Lowe, the leading scorer, back in the lineup for the Boilermakers, making a difference here tonight. And he's done it in a variety of ways, Wayne. From behind the arc, you see two of them right here. Also has been able to score off the dribble. Nice little baseline screen from uh, Bush who frees him up there, but he's also been able to split the defender. Nice little jump stop in the lane. They have really needed his production down the stretch, and he's delivered. To Tim Young on the inbounds to Bakusic. Bakusic playing with four personal fouls, picked up by Lowe in the zone. Bakusic to Tim Young inside. Beautiful look by Bakusic and Young with a nice move down low. And that's where a zone is vulnerable, Wayne, because Young came from the opposite side of the floor, and if the zone does not talk, it's very easy for an offensive player to get through there unnoticed. That's Hashad's first basket of the evening, Wayne. McKnight to keep. Busher left it short. Hashad the rebound. Northwestern by one. And right now, if you're Northwestern, you're going to run this shot clock and make Purdue <laughs> work defensively. Wildcats, and again, Bill Carmody says, let the clock run. Did this extremely well Saturday against Wisconsin. Really shortened a lot of possessions in the game as well. A shot picked up on a switch by Keeper. Lost the dribble. Up for grabs. Held ball. Alternating possession belongs to Northwestern. There's only three on the shot clock right now, so yeah. the Northwestern bench has to let the players on the floor know that. Bill Carmody just did that. Held three fingers over the years and three seconds ago on the clock. A shot trying to beat. The defender keeper off the crossover goes on the deck. No ball will stay with good, good move. He, he had a bigger man on him and tried to beat him off the dribble, take advantage of his quickness. Bigger man with four fouls. Parker had a shot blocked. Shot clock expires. And Purdue gets the basketball on the turnover. Take a look at the option stance flash from the arc. Northwestern coming up on its average of almost eight a game. Purdue not shooting it well from the arc, but shooting it much better recently as Kenneth Lowe has come to life with three second half three point field goals. Timeout taken by Purdue. Elsewhere earlier tonight, Indiana won, defeating Penn State on the road. Big win there for Indiana. Wisconsin leading Iowa by seven be an important road game for Wisconsin again. Michigan on top of Minnesota. The Williams Arena. Number one Duke won again. Only lost one to Purdue this year sure. in Alaska. St. Joseph's remains undefeated. An impressive win over Dayton. South Carolina, Mississippi State going down to the wire and into overtime. Providence all over Villanova in the Big East. Cincinnati on top of South Florida in Conference USA. Into the Big 12, Texas Tech trailing Oklahoma. And SIU all over Drake. Well, we have had a back and forth affair here tonight. 15 lead changes. Biggest lead for Northwestern, seven points. Biggest lead for Purdue, three. Quartermakers in possession. Pusher out front. Here's Kiefer. Off the ball. Wow. They've got a call coming up. What do they have? They, they have a shot on a hold. And boy, that is a huge, huge foul on Northwestern because what it does, Wayne, is that it resets the shot clock, first of all. It's away from the ball. It stops the clock, and it puts a pretty good foul shooter in Teague to the line. David Teague yet to score in the ball game here tonight. Second leading score, 11.5 points a game. 73% free throw shooter. And miss 
missed the front end of the uh, wow, that's it for Kiefer. And Kiefer called for the foul. Kiefer's fifth personal foul. And boy, that happened so quick. Gene Cady can't believe it. And there's a timeout on the floor. So let's take a look at the foul trouble here in this ballgame. Kiefer, the first casualty, didn't score after his nine point performance of the first 15 minutes of the game. Makusic and Hashad on the verge. Kiefer's out. Busher has two to play with. And Hashad's really been a non factor because of foul trouble throughout this ballgame. Wayne, if you look back to the first half, he went to the bench very early in that first half with two quick fouls, picked up his fourth here earlier, but uh, was scoreless throughout much of the ball game, but did hit the three here from the right corner that put Northwestern ahead. Well, this has got to be chalked up as an excellent performance on the road for this Northwestern ball club. Sean, they continue to grow in confidence and I think in, in being able to execute what Bill Carmody is looking for out there. Watch it goes to the line. Yeah, that, we've seen a couple of fouls called away from the ball. What the officials are trying to do, folks, they don't want the cutters bumped, held, knocked down. They're trying to clean up the action away from the ball. That's something that it was a directive a couple of years ago. Board of emphasis, that's yep. the Delonchich missed the front end of the one and one. Each side has had an opportunity. And about an eight-second difference between shot and game clock. So regardless of what happens here, Northwestern will get one more shot. Purdue trailing by one. Buckley wants McKnight to come for it, and he does. But that's who I want Kenneth to have the ball. Blow quickly. Short. Rebound. They draw Bakusic fouled by Kenneth Lowe. Lowe's third personal foul. Team is over the limit now. What was just said about Northwestern holds true now for Purdue. Regardless of what Bakuzic does on the foul line, you get the shot you probably want. Once again, a little screen from Busher might have been a little bit quick in the shot clock. If you're Purdue, Bakuzic there, low gives the foul. Home losses for Purdue to SMU and Ohio State. This would be a devastating loss for the Boilermakers if they are unable to get things turned around here in the final seconds. 22.9 remaining to be played. Akusic will be at the line when we resume. Coming up at noon this weekend on many of these ESPN Plus stations, noon Eastern, 11 Central, Minnesota and Michigan State. Tom Izzo's team was turning things around until they ran into that buzzsaw at Illinois last night. Michigan plays against Iowa on the road, and then the camper, Indiana, to Mackey Arena to take on the Purdue Boilermakers. Always a great event on ESPN Plus. That's coming up Saturday. And you will join Mike Gleason in the studio. How do you like that? The bright lights in the studio. I, I can't believe we get you to come out on a Wednesday night and slump with us here at Side Court. You drew the short straw, Wayne. I guess that's all it. <laughs> Oh, it's a lot of fun. How bad can a Saturday be when all you have to do is watch basketball? That's a pretty good deal. You know, it, it, I think it's tough duty, Sean, but somebody's got to do it. And, and we, those of us in the field respect the fact that you will go out there and sacrifice yourself to do that, to watch nothing but college basketball for two days. And the tough duty is Mike Leeson's because he's got to put up with me for six <laughs> And one of the games we saw last Saturday from the studio was Purdue and another nail-biter at Michigan. McKnight, the big basket, but they just don't stop ball penetration. Daniel Horton able to get in there, and Courtney Sims had two shots at it, converts the second, since Purdue home back here to Mackey Arena with a very, very tough loss. And, and again, we documented the close losses for Gene Cady this season. What, three games by two points or less? They've lost. They've lost four games by a total of 17 points. Seven losses in all. Could he afford a loss here? But Kusic front end of the one and one. This is huge. And he missed it. David T tracks down the rebound. Still a one point deficit for Purdue. Final seconds. Crowd comes to their feet at Mackey Arena. Kenneth Lowe trying to get free from a shot and a quick timeout taken. Timeout Purdue. 11.4 remaining. Boy, Wayne, both teams have had a chance to ice the game yep. from the foul stripe, and uh, both of them have come up empty. And 
particularly for Northwestern. Bakuzic, 90% from the line over the last two ball games, and uh, just not able to convert. Dewanchich before him also missed the front end. How about Northwestern? 0 for 5 from the free throw line tonight. And if you look at Purdue, they're 5 of 9, so you're right. And there's the close calls for the Boilermakers. I said four, six losses by 17 points, a total of 17. Four losses by two points or less. Wayne, if Northwestern comes up on the short end of this score, they're going to look at two things. Turnovers, particularly in the first half, yep. and then foul shooting here in the second. 15 turnovers for Northwestern. They came in averaging about 12 turnovers per game, but 15 here tonight. Purdue with 10 turnovers. Boilermaker ball, 11.4 remaining. Shot clock is off. Randy McKnight, let's see if they've drawn up something that'll work here. McKnight had it stripped away, stolen by Jatim Young, and they foul Young. Oh, what a play by the senior, and Gene Cady cannot believe it. Well, Jatim Young, only eight points, but just as Kenneth Lowe has delivered offensively big for Purdue, his fellow senior, Jatim Young, comes up with a huge play defensively for Northwestern. Jatim Young, fourth in the Big Ten in steals at almost two steals per game. None this season bigger than that one. 5.1 remaining. Now it's up to Young at the free throw line. And he missed the front end of the one and one. Still a one point game. Here comes Kenneth Lowe. Knocked away by Young. Picked out by Dwanchich. And Northwestern has pulled off the upset, winning in Mackey Arena. Purdue had won nine in a row over Northwestern here at Mackey Arena over the seasons. But not tonight. Northwestern hangs on 40 to 39. And in a grinded out type of ball game, neither team able to salt it away from the foul line. But two big defensive plays down the stretch by the senior to Tim Young for Northwestern. First on the steal from McKnight as he was going up to shoot. And then the back tap from Kenneth Lowe seals the win for Northwestern. A big win gets them to 500 in conference play. Purdue, meanwhile, falls to 15 and 8, and now 5 and 5 in conference play. Northwestern 10 and 11 overall, 5 and 5 in Big Ten play. Well, these Wildcats have got to be for real. The games they've won in recent weeks. Once again, it's a missed free throw. Buckley kicks it out. Now watch the back tap coming up right here into your screen. It was the senior Jatim Young who knocks it away. Jatim Young forced two turnovers in the last 20 seconds of this ball game that turned away the Boilermakers who did not score.